In prokaryotes, gene expression is often grouped into units of related genes and their control elements. These units are known as operons. One of the most well-understood operons is the LAC operon, the set of genes controlling lactose metabolism in E. coli bacteria. Lactose is a disaccharide consisting of galactose and glucose. In order for a bacterial cell to make use of lactose as an energy source, it must cleave the disaccharide in two, a job performed by the enzyme beta-galactosidase. Production of beta-galactosidase when the cell does not need to use lactose would be a waste of energy and should be avoided. Therefore, the lac operon is only turned on under specific conditions. Beta-galactosidase and two associated genes, permease and transacetylase, are only transcribed when lactose is present. Because the lac operon is off by default, and turned on only in particular circumstances, the LAC operon is said to be inducible. The mechanism of this inducible activity merits further consideration. Within the LAC operon, a regulatory gene codes for a repressor molecule. In the absence of lactose, this repressor molecule binds to the DNA just upstream of the genes coding for beta-galactosidase, permease, and transacetylase. These genes are known as the structural genes. The site of repressor binding is known as the operator. As long as the repressor is bound to the operator, RNA polymerase cannot proceed through the structural genes, and therefore transcription of beta-galactosidase, permease, and transacetylase is stopped. In the presence of lactose, allolactose, an isomer of lactose, binds to the repressor molecule and causes it to change shape. In its new conformation, the repressor molecule cannot bind the operator. With the operator free, RNA polymerase is free to bind the promoter and proceed with transcription of the structural genes. In the end, beta-galactosidase, permease, and transacetylase are produced and utilized to break down lactose for the cell to use. However, repressor-mediated transcription control of the lac operon only tells half of the story. Even if lactose is present, beta-galactosidase, permease, and transacetylase will not be produced if another more desirable energy source is available. Because glucose is preferable to lactose, it would be a waste of energy to produce the tools for dealing with lactose, only then to use glucose instead. Lac operon expression also relies on positive regulation. In order for RNA polymerase to effectively bind and transcribe the structural genes, an active CAP protein complex is required. However, the CAP protein is only active when bound by cyclic AMP. When glucose is available, cyclic AMP levels remain low and CAP therefore remains inactive. Under these circumstances, even though lactose is present, little transcription of beta-galactosidase, permease, and transacetylase occurs. Only when levels of glucose are low is cyclic AMP available to bind and activate CAP, which in turn facilitates transcription through enhanced RNA polymerase binding. Therefore, CAP is active and the lac operon transcribed efficiently only when lactose is present and more favorable energy sources are absent. This mechanism for gene expression control ensures that cells do not waste energy making proteins that will not be used. The operon system enables a prokaryotic cell to tailor its gene expression to the specific needs as dictated by its immediate environment.